Hey everyone. Hey guys. Welcome to another episode of Eigen Bros. Welcome, welcome. This week we're actually talking about um, basically units and yes. our dimensions mm-hmm. or dimensionality. And yes. are units sacred? <laughs> are they sacred? <laughs> Find out. <laughs> uh, no, we actually talk about um, a l- some of the physical constants in physics that kind of are big and or, or sort of. How would you say? How would you characterize it? Just these powerful, kind of mysterious constants, such as the fine structure constant. You know, yeah. Um, maybe the gravi- bit of cosmological constant. Cosmological constant. Yeah. The gravitational uh, gravitational constant. constant uh-huh. The Planck's constant. Mm-hmm. You know, we deal with some of the units there and talk a little bit about, you know, maybe misconceptions about dimensions and even mm-hmm. kind of going into, yeah, mostly just tying into like our units important are they are they fundamental to our physical world more than more than we think they are Mm -hmm. Um, we probably add a lot of confusion this podcast (laughs) maybe yeah but you know it's both sides maybe some people might say it's fence sitting but the thing is we kind of want to give you the whole narrative where it's you know we give some examples where there might be something deeper there but then also examples where you know most famously einstein was kind of just like you know, for the gravitational, uh, for the cosmological constant at least, just throwing it in there and being like, well, let's hope it works out. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, and then at the end it worked out. So there's 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 stuff like that where it's like, huh, okay, this is interesting. There might be something deeper here, but then there are also cases where as we get into it, um, there's just like, okay, this doesn't make sense. This is kind of a just a fancy way of keeping accounting, so to say. Right, right. So we just talk about, you know, units in general and the magical nature that they can possess. Magical. And there's some, there's some, hoping there's some deeper meaning to be discovered. So, yeah. yeah maybe. And um, I guess we'll, we'll just get it started, guys. Make sure you check um, eigenbros.com out. Mm-hmm. Um, also check out the Twitter, eigenbros. Check out the Instagram, eigenbros as well. And then mm-hmm. our TikTok is eigenbros too. And we'll see you guys in a bit. Three, two, one. Bam, 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 bam. The boys are back. The boys are back in town. Mm-hmm. Welcome to another well lit episode of I Am <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we really went on on a, a light <laughs> frenzy here. Yeah, so hopefully yeah. the lighting will turn out well on this one. We're still trying to figure out the setup for this. Or some woo people. Podcast. Like, yeah, some wooey people like to say, you know, photon therapy. <laughs> Some photon therapy right now. Uh, <laughs> photon therapy. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. This is warm. The lights are, are washing over me. I feel it already. <laughs> feel those photon rays hitting my melanin enriched skin. <laughs> this is supposed to give us like super, super, super energy or something. Now? Yeah, yeah, uh. yeah. Uh, well, the only one that actually works is uh, sunlight. So, mm. okay, so yeah. no photon energy for us. Well, no, no. unfortunately, gotta, even though I don't know the distinction between sunlight's photons versus <laughs> normal well, lights photons. Well, it's it's a conversion in the bo- it's, a, it's a process. Well, this is in UV. You know, what that's I'm true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You go. Well, there yeah, you go. sunlight is like, sunlight's UV. Uh-huh. Yeah, includes UV rays, and so it's more. High energy. You know, all, all encompassing and your body converts that into vitamin D, which is super necessary right now if you're fighting off some kind of cold virus like me. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've been, con- well, how long has it been now? Should we sit forward or should I sit back? <laughs> hey, man, whatever you want, dude. We got, right. we got, we got two angles. Well, I want to get it. I want to make it look. You know, normal when we're sitting. So I'll yeah. sit the same. This is camera as you. camera A. This is like okay uh-huh. for the audio listeners. We have a weird camera setup. Go on their YouTube channel, yeah, Eigen yeah. Bros. Yeah, uh, YouTube channel and uh, check it out. We have two cameras set up. It looks like straight out of the nineties. I feel like we're starting over again. In some <laughs> sense. We're trying to figure out how the heck to a new era. Yeah, how the has, heck to set this up? <laughs> a new era has 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 begun. Mm-hmm. Where now we get camera A and B, camera B. But we've always had two cameras. It's, it's always been one for me and one for you. Yeah. But this looks like this is like a studio. This is like a. Have you ever seen those? You remember watching? Oh, I'm sorry, folks. We're gonna we're gonna get into a, a, little, a little tangent here. Yeah. But uh, for those of you nerds out here, uh, there's a channel called G4. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, it was we about, talked about this. We talked about this, but mm-hmm. they had a show called X Play, which was. Uh, a show about reviewing video games mm-hmm. and they used to have they kind of had this like same sort of setup i mean most 
shows have this setup, but it's like you have A camera and then B camera. Mm -hmm. And whenever, uh, you know, some people are like, whatever they're looking at a camera and then they go to the b shot and it's mm-hmm. like us talking to camera a <laughs> it's it's it just yeah. reminds me it's very 90s to me but, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see if we can Shit, replicate, bring it back to 90s yeah man. Well, let's see if we can replicate that magic let's yeah we're, we're 90s babies if you haven't uh noticed mm-hmm. uh, anyway, anyway. <laughs> shall uh, we uh let's begin sh- shall we jump in yeah, so yes yeah, so i guess uh this podcast i wanted to talk about um Actually, inspired by your your mm-hmm. um, suggestions, Suggestion, yeah. you 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 had me look up um, unsolved p- physics problems. Mm-hmm. I locked him in his bedroom and I said, "Don't come out until you give me <laughs> give me two topics to talk about." I want topics. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, J. Jonah Jameson yeah. from uh, Spider Man. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I yes. I want pictures of Spider. I want pictures of the fine structure concept. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, so I look, so I was looking through the topics, unsolved mm-hmm. topics of physics, and mm-hmm. um, we uh, I stumbled acro- across a really interesting one to me. Mm-hmm. For some reason, it just stuck out to me. I don't know why. Cause I guess maybe because it was one of these things that has always kind of bothered me. Um, and uh, the topic was called um, dimensionless constants or dimensionless quantities. Uh, or I guess to be more precise, it's just dimensional, dimensionless physical quantities. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess the dimension. God, I can't even say it. I have to think. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, been the, a, it's been a long morning for us. <laughs> <laughs> the dimensionless physical quantities problem. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I I'm sure I, I remember uh, a while back one when I was telling you about my my hangups with physical quantities. Yeah. So I remember I was um, stuck one time on torque versus energy, mm-hmm. and I we were we were sitting in a um, Chili's one day, and I was <laughs> trying to justify how we can unify torque and energy somehow. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is my naivete back then. I, I've kind of resolved this one since then, but mm-hmm. I used to be bothered by the fact that torque and energy had the same units. Mm-hmm. So for for those of you who are less familiar, torque has the units of newton meters, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, of course, energy is the units of joules, but joules can be broken down into, unit, into newton meters. Mm-hmm. But the difference between torque and energy is that torque has its units from the cross product, and then energy has units from the dot product. Yes. So it would be the force dot distance, and then the other one would be the force cross the distance. So you can think about it this way, if it, <clears throat> for those of you that aren't mathematically inclined. The dot product is basically like whenever the you only take the component of the force that's pointing the same direction along... The, the the direction that you're pushing it, I guess you could say, right? Right, and, and the these product, these are vectors. These are vectors. Yeah, so this is vector math or vector vector. Would this be considered uh, vector calculus? You can you can get into calculus. You learn it in vector calculus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But cross product is just like uh, it, it's more about the that that one's a little trickier to, to define. Yeah, right? it is. Because but it gives you but the thing about the cross product is it gives you a like is say if you're doing the cross product of two vectors, it gives you a dimension in a third dimension now it's a resultant vector that usually points perpendicular yeah, yeah, yeah. perpendicularly to, to the, the other to the two plane. vectors yeah to the other so two. it's really a cool very nice useful mathematical um operation because mm-hmm. you actually get a third dimension or an extra dimension now from your cross product from that um, calculation yeah it's exactly. a set of rules to get to that but yeah. yeah 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 but anyway so that one was um always bothered me and i came up with this convoluted stupid you know looking back now a stupid theory about how to try to Combine torque and energy, or let's, somehow. Let's hear it. I don't remember. I don't even know <laughs> ah, what it was, okay, but okay. I just know it was something dumb yeah. because you know the the two quantities are very different, right? Because I mean, energy is as a scalar, and then torque is a um, vector. Yeah. Because when you take the cross product, you actually get a vector quantity back, and then when you take a, a dot product, you get a scalar quantity. So they're and not the, even really related. Yeah, and the scalar is uh, scalar is just like a number. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have any other information besides. It being a magnitude. quantity, a magnitude uh-huh. in, in physics terms, and a vector ha- is is a number with an associated like direction or other information that's that's associated with it. So right, so magnitude and direction is what you get when you have a right. vector. Right, right. So, um, so yeah, and I always was like, you know, units should be sacred. Units should be like, you know, if I see the unit, I should know what quantity that's associated yeah. with. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to invoke my Dirac there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Dirac was kind of this guy who really loved the beauty of physics and thought that somehow um, beauty should 
align with physics. I tend to mm-hmm. agree with him. Um, uh, rest in peace. Uh, yeah, Derek, gone, rest gone in too peace. soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you were here, we wouldn't be. We would have better theory, I bet, yeah. but maybe not. But um, yeah. So the dimensionless unit unit um, uh, quantities, you know, going on that topic now is kind of interesting because. You know, there's these, there's all these properties of units. I feel like there's some information or some deep deep knowledge we should be able to glean from unit quantities, and specifically these are the constants. So, like constants would be, for example, like the gravitational g, big G constant. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what it is? It's like six point six seven times ten to the negative eleven. Right, right. And then it's got some jumbly units. Yes. So that's a that's a that's a a, a physical constant of the universe. Um, that has units. Yes. And then we also have like the Coulomb's constant, K, or 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. That one also has some unit full, I think, right? Is that yeah, one yeah, yeah. Units? But it, it, yeah. Uh, there's yeah. some physicists, well, yeah. So Terence is of the mindset that the units are sacred and they should mean something. And then there's physicists like, I guess I kind of lean towards this camp, but um, where units are kind of a convenient sort of. Uh, construct where like you know it just works out that way but um but then again i don't know i'm kind of swayed i'm a little bit 50 50 i'm kind of a fence sitter on this one i'm, I'm a 50 52 oh, i really? wouldn't say okay. anything of mine is is resolved you know if, you know as a physicist nothing's mm-hmm. really ever resolved until it's just like yeah. oh yeah like until you just get <laughs> yeah. that extra satisfaction yeah, but yeah. you know for me it's just like i i would hope that there's some kind of magical something about units mm-hmm. and um you know when you get to those unitless quantities, then you start to get, or I guess before we jump to unitless, you can jump over to different kinds of units that are more, um, uh, what would you call magical? I guess I hate using this word, but sure, mathematical. Just to- yeah, yeah. There's a there's another kind of quantity you can get to, which are are basically in, intensive quantities. So, for example, an intensive unit or an intensive quantity or constant, I guess would be something like um, of, of, of density. So density is mass over volume, which is a unit full quantity. So it has units, right? Which is just kilograms over uh, meters cubed. In SI. If you're, yeah, if you're working in a, the SI units. What, what is, so for those who don't, I imagine people, most people know what I'm talking about, but uh, SI means... Uh, System international. Yeah. It's French for international system. Yeah. And it's in, it's in the... Uh, Kilograms, meters, seconds. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, those are the main those ones. Those are the main ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's yeah. Kilograms, meters. It's like basically the not the non-imperial system. <laughs> right, right, right. The metric system, essentially. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, an intensive quantity like density is really nice because basically you can ask someone like, "What's the density of water?" and that's a mm-hmm. meaningful question. Mm-hmm. You can actually give them a number. Yeah, but if you ask somebody what's the mass of water, that doesn't have any meaning, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you need to have more information to be able to actually actually answer that. You just say, mm-hmm. "How much water do you have?" So the opposite of an intensive quantity would be an extensive quantity. So you would say, like, you know, the mass of water, uh, the mass of three, you know, three centimeters cubed of water is X. Mm-hmm. That actually has meaning, and then you can quantify that all though with the density. Yeah. So the density is this quantity, this magical quantity that does not depend on the size of the of the object that you're given. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's some other things like temperature that's another intensive quantity where it would be like what's the temperature or the temperature of a system in equilibrium. You can say mm-hmm. like the temperature of a system in equilibrium is X um, degree sure. because the whole system is in equilibrium. So mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how small you scale, the degree temperature should be the same at every um, – at any size. Yeah. So these are pretty powerful, these intensive quantities, you know. But, of course, then I want to go even further and say, are there anything – is there any quantities that are are these intensive quantities that are unitless? Mm -hmm. So these are where we get to the dimensionless physical quantities. And the big one that people kind of know, the physicists know, is the fine structure constant, as Juan mentioned earlier. So the fine structure constant is this really interesting constant that is basically one over one thirty seven. You've probably, I'm sure some of you have seen it. Um, it's it's really like one over one thirty seven point zero eight six or something like mm-hmm. that. I don't know if that's the right numbers, but um, 
it's close enough to 137 where people just, you know, quote the 1 over 137 being the fine structure constant. Mm -hmm. And this constant is really interesting because it's related to um, the spectrum of atoms. So there's this weird property of atom, of an atom. I think it's specifically maybe the hydrogen atom mm -hmm. where um, you get this splitting of the of the hydrogen spectrum. So if you're taking a hydrogen spectrum, that's basically just you're gathering light. One hour later. Anyway, you get this you get these spectral lines for hydrogen that are really close. And it's kind of weird because this is like like why are these spectral lines so close? And um, it has to do with the fine structure constant, or at least you can measure it using the fine structure constant. So the mm -hmm. distance between those spectral lines is alpha or the fine or is a you know multiple of that fine structure constant. So it's got this really um, fundamental property to it, and actually, the um, the one of the the adm advents of uh, quantum mechanics was, you know, because of that whole you know f uh, fine structure problem there. Um, I think was was that the ultra ultraviolet catastrophe? No, that's from uh, black body radiation. Okay, but all yeah, these things like different. black bodies and blind spectrum are kind of related in some way. Mm -hmm. My knowledge is a little bit um, rusty. I haven't looked at it. Uh, recently, but um, the uh, well, well, I think a more important one that we can sort of latch on to is like a number like pi. Pi is the most simple one and it's so prevalent. Pi, okay, yeah. So, pi, it was actually pi day, uh, a couple yesterday, uh, yesterday, yeah, yeah. Um, well, not yesterday when the podcast comes out, but yesterday for uh, the shooting of the podcast, the shooting, <laughs> yeah, 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 yesterday, but um, yeah, but, also Einstein's birthday. Shout out to Einstein, right. Yeah. So yeah, pi is definitely this unitless um, quantity because mm -hmm. it's basically two lengths divided by each other. But the thing about that one is it's it's not um, a physical quantity, which is why I didn't really you don't think so. It. It's not. I know it's not. Why when I say physical, I mean it has to do with physics. So pi is something that comes from geometry, uh, right? Because yeah. you're you're it's literally the ratio of the circumference over the diameter. But the physical, the unitless physical How is quantities that not are a, thing a little of bit nature, different, though. It is, but it's it's almost more abstract. So, like, the fine structure constant has to do with something that's actually a physical – has to do with something that's physical in nature. And then also, like, another example of a unitless um, uh, quantity that is um, related to physics would be the um, ratio between the um, masses of prot uh, the proton and the electron. So those are things so that you saying, get from nature. So though. you're saying intrinsic intrinsic properties of, of – of, of, of well, they're fundamental or... to nature somehow. Right. Like, you would never just come up with a fine structure constant on your own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but, but I'm saying pi is something that is universal, meaning that it will come out if it's invariant across the universe, more than likely. Right, but I'm saying it's almost like a, it's a higher level. It's, it's, like a, it's beyond physics. It's now mm -hmm. in the realm of mathematics. So mathematics has this kind of almost like... Um, overseeing quality or to sure. physics somehow it's like it's like uh it's it's abstract mm -hmm. so pi doesn't fit into what i'm what i'm talking about here i mean it fits but it's not it's something that i wasn't focusing on too so much because it's in the yeah. realm of math mm -hmm. you see it's like circles and these things are independent of nature mm -hmm. in a way mm -hmm. or you okay. can maybe argue that somehow fair enough um but it, to me it's it's yeah this this argument is uh yeah, I, but I see what you're saying. In general, you're saying there there are certain values that we gather in nature that pop out from just doing calculations and stuff, and or you, doing measurements or some, or doing, some type, yeah, yeah, right? or taking ratios of certain things, and then you yeah. get you get yeah. certain things out. Now, now, when you take a ratio though of something over something, like typically it means you take a ratio of two of the same quantities, like mm -hmm. you're taking the mass of uh, the proton and the electron. Yeah, uh -huh. so you, you get a unitless. You could just get a number. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but you're saying that particular value is actually I can't remember a the, unitless dimensional physical quantity. Yeah. But what what val what significance does it have? I guess. Right. So that's one thing I was kind of thinking about because Dirac actually was testing with this number. Mm -hmm. So the ratio between the proton and the electron, and um, the reason he did this was because um, he thought it had ties to. Um, well, I guess he was trying to see once again the beauty between certain um, certain physical uh, quantities in nature. So, one thing he was seeing that was, um, I think it was the ratio between the force of gravity mm -hmm. and the force of electromagnetism. Mm. Um, Coulomb force, essentially. 
Yes. Um, let me actually remember if this is true, because I need to remember if... Um, so you tried to compare both of them, I imagine? It was either it was either lives. that or... So what he was trying to do was he noticed that there was this crazy large number. Yeah, I th- yeah, he was yeah. So this is instead of no, let's not talk about the massive proton and electron yet. <laughs> so he was trying to find the 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 ratio between the electromagnetic and the gravitational force, and he found that the order was like ten to the thirty nine or something. Right. So it's this really crazy large number, and then he was trying to say, okay, this is like a completely g- disgusting number. God would never make this kind of ratio be a thing. Mm. Like, it's just too ugly. So then he's, he's trying to think of, like, what else is comparable to 10 to the 39? And then he came to the fact that the universe is compared comparatively, you know, something like the age of the universe would be compared to the 10 to the 39th power. My man is reaching out here. Well, it makes sense, right? He's trying to, trying to think of numbers that are related. <laughs> it's almost like numerology in some ways. Yeah. But, you know, that can actually get you to the right answers sometimes in some weird ways. But, sure. um, you know, he's like, okay, so how can I compare 10 to the 39 with the universe and this electromagnetic force and mm-hmm. gravitational force ratio? So then what he did was he said, okay, maybe since gravity is so much less than the electromagnetic force, I mean, 39 orders of magnitude less, maybe there's some weird effect where the gravity constant actually is not fixed so it actually changes over time so he said okay let's just imagine that gravity changes like a function of one over t where t t is time Mm -hmm. so he measured the frequency of of a uh, proton which he said was kind of the quantum of time in some way because you know frequency and time are related yeah so the frequency of a proton he translated that into some time and he got some number like 10 to the minus 22 or something. Mm-hmm. So he called that like the fundamental unit of time. He extends this out to how long the universe has been around now, which is somewhere in the order of like 10 to the 17. Mm-hmm. So then he divides 10 to the 17th and 10 to the negative 22, and he gets 10 to the 39. So he's saying that, oh, this is interesting, because then that means that perhaps this gives him some evidence that actually the constant gravitational constant is changing over time because you know he he took this ratio between the fundamental unit of time which he derived from the frequency of the proton Mm -hmm. um and then you know had that related with the um you know in a ratio with the age of the universe as it is right now and it's coming out with the same power as you know as how the universe uh how long the universe has existed right so it was interesting um connection but i think it's something that we still haven't been able to, been able to to find out yet and the mass of the proton and the electron i don't know what the significance of those w- were um but they just know it's like you know the proton is something something like 1800 times the mass of the of the electron sounds to me like he's reaching but yes yeah, what you're saying because yeah. it's like you're you're kind of you it's almost like numerology in some ways yeah. where you're just like trying to find numbers but i get I get that because, like, even if you're trying to do that, even if you know it's if even if you know it's wrong, you can yeah. still try these things to see if they work out. Because yeah. Dirac has actually discovered certain things by doing certain reaches like this, which right. actually are interesting. Like, you know, he was the first guy to actually predict the anti-proton. Mm-hmm. His logic was almost a little bit Followed flawed in log- thinking, yeah, same f- but it led to the actual answer, which yeah. is true. Where that and I think I talked about this at one time. Maybe mm-hmm. I can't remember now, but it had to do with the Dirac C. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, you did. You yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, that was related to quantum field theory. Um, yeah, I forget exactly what it was related to, but I think I've talked about it. So he does some crazy leaps, mm-hmm. but they're all like within reason. Sure. It's, it's like a, it's like a theorist just trying stuff. Yeah. So it's interesting because you know that just. That's just one of these things where, you know, it shows that we actually don't even know if the constants that we, you know, uphold so greatly are actually even constant. Yeah. And I think it's an interesting thought. What, what are your, what's your take on that? Do you have any I thoughts? I think, yeah, I mean, I've always kind of held that the, 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 opi- it's a more of an opinion, but with the constants that we have now are necessary, might not, we don't know if they were constant throughout time. Mm-hmm. They could have just been 
they could be in the short time frame that we're in constant or sort of an average, right? Right. A con a sort of universal average where it's like, okay, it's right now it's constant, but as you the as the universe evolves, we're probably going to learn new things about how the universe is evolves in time. Mm-hmm. Because we don't we know the past, but we don't know the future, right? Now there's there's a sort of deterministic framework that you can work in. And I think a lot of physicists have this where they how would you say where they they say, well, since we know what the initial conditions are, we can predict the future, but in a sense we don't have the complete we might not have the complete picture. Things might change in time or models might right. might have to be adapted to how would you say um to new information that that comes mm-hmm. about so so in a sense like Dirac's sort of intuition about this sort of change in how would you say in, in the, the gravitational, gravitational constant, constant, yeah. constant yeah um that that doesn't seem i mean his it's kind of cool that he's actually backing it up by using some fundamental like concepts of like you know the the frequency of the proton or whatever um yeah um and yeah that's kind of cool but uh and i hadn't actually heard of that but yeah i didn't either until i started looking into it yeah for this podcast because i'm not i actually wasn't really familiar with the fine structure constant as well Mm -hmm. that much like i I, i've always seen one over 137 but yeah i never realized the significance of it well that's like a neutron that's usually like an atomic physics dude's like forte right yeah i imagine so or yeah. like a theorist who works, you know, on trying to find unified theories and things like that. Maybe like a, that's I know that's a nuclear physicist forte in a sense because like you you're doing you're looking at the nucleus and the proton neutron that's the, that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and then looking at how the emission spectra looks like for them and uh, but yeah that's not that's not necessarily what we do me and Terrence <laughs> right we're experimentalists we're we're uh, le- we we study electrons and not sort of just nuclei sort of whatever and we're also not trying to find grand unified theories yeah we're not <laughs> or anything like that but this is really interesting because um you know the the fine structure constant is one of these ones that's almost to it's 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 one of these i think i've i've gained an appreciation for why people like it because it's this dimensionless quantity but it also contains some of the really most potent um constants of physics because the fine structure constant can be written as you know the charge of the electron squared divided by Planck's constant times the speed of light. Nice. So you've got charge, Planck's constant, and speed of light. And all these combined gives you a dimensionless quantity. So there's almost there's almost some character to it. It's like it's, it's like it's it transcends physics and, and everything in some way. It's like it, it's this transcendent so quantity. So fundamental, you're saying. Yeah. And I think the goal of a lot of theorists is to somehow find as few dimensionless quantities as they can to describe how the universe works yeah and i think i agree i i would love to see that too i don't know if it's true or if it's possible you know there's something to be gained from understanding constants i feel like mm-hmm. you know unit full unit list, intensive extensive all of these things are there's something there that hasn't been fully tied together yet i think yeah i think i think it's a it's super interesting because like oh this this whole topic of like dimensions and stuff now when most people think about dimensions they don't necessarily they think about spatial dimensions and not informational dimensions Mm -hmm. right typically physicists when they talk about excuse me dimensionality uh it's usually in relation to what variables are interesting to them right um or what they're measuring well i guess we can use many different meanings this is where linguistics kind of breaks down in right many but ways. then but this is where woo kind of comes in yeah. sometimes yeah. where people talk when they talk about dimensions they they think spatial dimensions but we're not necessarily talking spatial dimensions right it's like your words are just you can't just latch onto the word you need to know the context of the word right and the context i'm saying typically the way we refer it to is usually has to do with some information that we're looking at so for instance in in um you know, sometimes in some relation we might have time as a dimension, but we're mm-hmm. looking at it in relation to, say, force. Say, look at how force, uh, the force evolves in time. 
mm-hmm. right? So it's okay. force versus time, and time is a dimension in that sense. So it depends on your at, the analytical framework that you're looking at. Right. Uh, I just want to make sure to clarify this for listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So linguistics uh, can be – this is the thing that's – linguistics breaks down with physics and math a lot mm-hmm. of times because, yeah. you know, some of these, these things, like we have colloquial meanings for things like, for example, one of the classic ones is weight. Mm-hmm. You know, when I'm talking about how much do you weigh, you know, people will give you, you know, oh, I weigh 170 pounds. But in physics, weight means um, mass times gravity. Yeah. So, you know, when when we're saying weight, we mean your mass times your gravity. And, and 130 pounds, that's your... Um, to get your true mass, your, you'd have to divide that by gravity. Yeah. 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 So it's like there's, there's different linguistic things that break down. It's just they don't always... Um, your your linguistics will fail you unless you understand really well what you're talking about in the realm yeah. of, you know, physics and math. Yeah. Yeah, that you know, messes a lot of students up in physics one, too. And then, yeah. especially when you come to teach these labs, you, you kind of get a sense of where the deficiencies are. And e- even I will admit that I kind of had that same, how would you say, <clears throat> those same misconceptions. And mm-hmm. I have friends that I talk to about physics, and they, they kind of get into this whole when they talk about dimensions, mm-hmm. they don't. They think about spatial dimensions, and, not, and they're, they're in physics or not? They're not in physics. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what I'm saying. I want to clarify to people yeah. that this is we're talking about something that isn't just. Yeah, it's in the you context. You can't just know if you don't know. Like colloquially, these these linguistic, you know, these linguistics don't match up one to one in the real world versus mm-hmm. the physics world. Yeah. Always. So just be careful when you're looking at or when we talk about dimensions like that. Just be careful. And, and and even this, like I teach I teach a physics lab and one of the first things I go over immediately is something called dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is such a great tool to have if mm-hmm. you want to solve physical problems or just any calculation that relates to some kind of how would you say um any, whatever, if you're doing an experiment or something and you want to make sure, or your calculation, you want to make sure that your results make sense and they follow through mm-hmm. with the same units that you're looking at. So uh, <clears throat> what I mean by units, of course, are the same dimensions that I'm talking about, Yeah. Um, yeah. the quantities that you're looking at. And typically I'm going to work in SI or what is it? What is it? What was it called again? Intel, uh, System International. System International. International. <laughs> System International. <laughs> I guess uh, until national. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the French people who, uh, I guess, formalized it. I guess so. Uh, I guess it's probably but, why it's called that. I don't know. Yeah, but um, but anyway, the uh, yeah. So that's something that I teach immediately to my students first day, just saying, hey, by the way, I want you to know how units work because they're so confused when I talk about dimensions and stuff. Yeah, and or even just units and stuff like that. I, I just say, hey, like. You want to make sure that your calculation looks the same. Like we're, when we're looking at forces, some of them report kilograms at the end of like, you know what I mean? They just write down something at the end of it. Oh, and they don't think about what it is. Yeah. yeah. They don't think like we're yeah. looking at a force. It sh- the unit should be newtons, mm-hmm. should be mass times acceleration. That's why, that's why I've always thought units have some greater quality. They because do. it's like, you know, you can – you're always going to get the proper units out. Like that's one check you're doing that I didn't learn until a while. Actually, no, yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, like you should always be getting the correct units out, and that's a great way to check yourself. You yeah. know that you don't really utilize in the beginning of physics. At least I didn't. You know, I was kind of just like, oh, I'll get the answer, and I'll put the unit later. Yeah. But then I started actually using units to check my mm-hmm. answers, and then also you can kind of even come up with the equations if you don't know the unit or right. if you know the units exactly. So it's like if you forget something, you say, oh, I know that this needs to have um, a mass involved mm. in order to get the correct unit. So you don't have to memorize things as, as much either because you can just say, oh, I know that the unit needs to be. So then I know these quantities need to be involved in my equation. So units are very suggestive and very powerful, um, and they have a lot of utility. Yeah. Um, the, one that stump, the one that stumps us typically for me and Terrence, well, we, we've had multiple discussions on oh it. We might, and we might have a whole episode dedicated <laughs> to this because it's yeah. such a powerful notion and such a powerful just I idea in, about. in physics. <laughs> and it's called the unit of action. Yeah, yeah. And it's so fundamental because um, it's, you know, 
Planck's constant is a, is in mm-hmm. units of uh, action, right? Right. Joule seconds. Joule seconds. And yeah, it's just now can, we're just kind of prefacing this before we move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, action is an interesting one because it it's joule seconds and not joules per second. Right, God damn it, Juan! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we wanted to stu- we wanted it. to hear, like, let our listeners get a sense of what stumps us. You yeah, know yeah. What I mean? So a more there's natural, more to it than that, though. But, there is. Yeah, but we'll we'll go into it at some point. But but that's one example where where the 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 units kind of it's hard to wrap your head around. But we can even go beyond just action with that because mm-hmm. for me, um, really anything times another th- quantity. Is harder to conceive of than something divided by something, right? In terms of units, so That's like, true. of course, when we think of velocity, mm-hmm. you think naturally meters per second, length per time. Mm-hmm. That makes a, a bunch of sense. You're saying, okay, how long does it take me to go this length? It takes me to go this amount of length per time. Mm-hmm. When I start to see something like length times time. I don't even know what that <laughs> means in my mind. It's just like, um. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, how do but, you? Because you because you want to fractionalize things, right? You want to you want to well, you, you want it to square away with some kind of um, intuition, and well, well, you want to make you want to make sure that you you what I mean by fractionalize is you take a segment per segment. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you're more comfortable saying you have a more natural intuition of that, yeah, as opposed to this coupled with. With this, well, they're coupled, but still, even with the but the know, coupling velocity, doesn't make but, sense though. But the multiplicity, yeah, the is multiplicity. harder to understand. It is, of course. One way to to rationalize this is to say, like, let's say, let's say we have um, Newton's law, f equals m a. You can then say that with an equal sign, it makes more sense. You can say force is proportional to mass and acceleration. Mm-hmm. So as acceleration goes up, your force will go up. As 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 mass goes up, your force will also go up. So when there's some kind of equal sign, the proportionality makes sense because it's saying that when this goes up, that goes up. When this yeah. goes down, that goes down. And then you can also even do it with the the negative with the division. So mm-hmm. with velocity equals distance over time, as time goes up, your velocity actually goes down. Mm-hmm. And as distance goes up, your velocity goes up. Mm-hmm. So there's the inverse, the inverse and directly proportional relations between yeah. those things, which gives a more intuition. But you know, if you if you take away that equal sign and just think of the quantity alone, you know, length times time, it's harder to try to think <laughs> of what that means. Even yeah. though I don't, I don't even know if length times time is something. Is that something? No, I mean meters seconds. I I mean I don't know. I, don't I mean in, when we when we measure um, when we measure you know in condensed matter physics. Well, you might not know, but, but in condensed matter physics, we deal with um, micro ohm centimeters. That's one okay. of those things where it's like the same thing. It's like yeah. something resistivity coupled with like a, a dimension of length. Length. And it's like wait what? Okay. Yeah. But then. Yeah, but it makes sense if you have the quantity it's equal to. I, I'm sure because that's sure. equal to resistivity, right? Yeah. So then you say, okay, I know it has this direct proportionality between mm. the two quantities I'm looking at, the yeah. resistance as well as the. Um, you say, is it area or length? It's length. Length. Yeah. So yeah, so that makes sense. So, but, but, but still, alone, it's hard to conceive of. But that's another case where the the units might come out of. They might kind of leave your head scratching for yeah. for a second. But the um, other the other thing I guess I wanted to bring up, which we kind of touched on in the very beginning, was you know the torque and the energy relation. Yeah, yeah. Another thing about that is you know torque is related to angular phenomenon. Mm-hmm. So I've noticed that a lot of angular phenomenon have this extra unit of length, mm-hmm. right? Because we're we're actually adding in radius a lot of times yes. into these circular motions and these angular motions. Mm-hmm. So then they start to take on the same units as things that we think about in linear systems. Mm-hmm. So then that almost breaks down some of that um, sacredness of the units being, the, you know, you know, the sacredness of units were. But I think that's, you know, a lot of those quantities have to do with the cross product again. So it's different kinds of multiplication, but mm-hmm. you have to you have to know that somehow. Um, and you can't just look at the unit and say, oh, I know this is a quantity of X and this is a quantity of Y because of the units. You you have to know if it's an angular phenomenon or a linear phenomenon as well. Yeah, but fundamentally, it should make sense that 
the, you're performing the same kind of action in the, at the end of the day. Like, the, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say action. I'm using, I'm mixing up terminology. Uh-huh. But what I mean by that is torque in the angular phenomena versus torque in like you're applying force to to some to something like a door. Okay. Right? Uh, you get the same units of work. You know what I'm saying? You get the same. Okay. Like I'm saying, there. I think in the in the scope of what am I trying to say? In the scope of the universe, those two those two actions, they both require energy. I guess. So, okay. So I don't know if that. I'm missing your your my, point. My, my, my Are point. you losing your own point? It sounds like. <laughs> no, I just want to clarify. To me, it makes sense. I don't know if I don't know. It, so you're saying it's. It's kind of because in- you're saying it's kind of interesting that both of these two different actions give you the same. Well, think about this. What's the unit for um, angular frequency? Mm, yeah, it's uh, radians per second, right? Right. So it's per second. Um, but I guess frequency. That's that's not so unusual. Um, let me think of another one. Let's let's try to think. So the unit of um, What's the unit of angular momentum? That would be kilograms, um, meters, times, um, or kilograms, kilograms meters, meters per, per second, second yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that anything else? Not necessarily. No. It's just, it's just momentum. So torque is maybe the only infringer I ever think. I thought I had another example before, but I can't remember it now. But that, but torque, torque is something that is kind of stumbles a lot of people when they when they are first introduced to yeah, it. Yeah, I still barely like torque. <laughs> because torque torque is like it's not even they represent it typically as a vector. As a vector, but then sometimes it can be written as a at least when I first encountered it, I thought it was a force. Yeah. yeah. You think of it as a force because there's always the classic problem with say like, you know, if you have a, a, a you've like a um let me think, what kind of system is it? It's like if you have a wrench and you're tightening something. Yeah. Like if you're tightening like a bolt, right? If you have too much torque, you can pop it off. Mm-hmm. So you think of like, oh, if my torque is really high, then I can pop this um, mm-hmm. bolt off or something, and yeah. it flies in the direction of the torque. Mm-hmm. But the torque is not a force. So there's something weird. It's a going resultant, on yeah. But the, I've I've heard the language. It's sloppy because I've I've heard people say it's a resultant force in a way, but it's not. Not not. It's it's the amount of it's. The resultant work done, in a sense, right? Because torque is and it's it's energy, right? It's not energy. I mean, it's no. you get units of energy, right? But it's not related to energy. Yeah, but it's like the resultant. That's where you're. I guess you can't. You have to call. That's why they call it Newton meters. Yeah. So you don't confuse it with energy. So it's sure. it's not energy. It's not related to energy. I mean, you can relate anything to energy, almost, <laughs> but it's not energy. Okay, but it's nonetheless it's a resultant it's it's where the see we're gonna have a fundamental discussion. It might be now. it might be um it might be more related to force in angular systems. Sure. Because you know, if you just think of the angular analog of something, you just mm. take that linear phenomenon and then add meters to it, you or multiply it with meters. Mm. So force is newtons, right? Mm-hmm. And then we just multiply it by meters, it's now torque. Mm-hmm. So it is related to force. Mm-hmm. In the angular motion, but it's not force. Just like how sure. you know, momentum is angular momentum mm-hmm. when you add the meters there. So they have the same units times a uh, you know times a length for the yeah. radius part. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just saying what that means exactly though is still something that I have not internalized fully. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That also relates to the whole like inertia and everything too, because you know you can write torque as you know i times alpha which is the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration yeah yeah yeah. and inertia is already weird enough to me so <laughs> and that's the and that's the analog yeah, of mass yeah because you know um and that's even weird too because then moment of inertia what's the units of that that's like uh kilograms meters squared is it it's the analog of mass in this case. So, yeah, yes, it's, it's meters like square. Just... But then now you have so now you have two. Now you have a meter square. Yeah, you'd have kilograms, I think. You should mm-hmm. have kilograms at the end of it because it's the an- Well, no, no, no. Well, I was just uh... saying that the rule was you know you you take the linear phenomenon mm-hmm. and then multiply it by a length. Yeah, yeah. 
So if we're thinking of mass, oh, yeah, yeah, then it's yeah, yeah, kilograms yeah, it's times meters. meters. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, meters yeah, yeah, squared, right. I'm pretty sure. Uh, is that true? No, no, no. Because I the angular the angular acceleration would already have a meters component to it. No, so, it doesn't. Because angular acceleration is um, one over seconds squared. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Be, yeah so it's you, meters squared. Right. <laughs> so then that might, then now then, then it already breaks down. So, yeah, so but all it, these it, things it's can it's be a bunch a of ways difficult. to represent it. And uh, but in that case, units aren't sacred. That's what that's what leaves your yes. Yeah, so this is right. where you're trying to tie it all in. So this is why it's like, how are units? How are they working? <laughs> units. I, how do they work? Yeah, like there's something to them, yeah. but there's still some weird stuff going on with them. Yeah. Well, just that I haven't fully resolved, and I don't know if you know. I and I think you know universally it hasn't been fully resolved yet. I'm sure some other people might have some better takes on you know. Yeah. Some of these things like angular versus like the linear phenomenon, but. Well, just to kind of give a uh, a nice, like, ah, what was I going to say? Yeah. It was about the, ah, oh, it escaped me. Okay. It was such an important <laughs> well, Maybe if I, maybe if we keep going, you can think of it. Ah, oh, it was at the tip of my tongue. <laughs> it sucks because it was really, it was really, prev- it was really a, a poignant thing to say oh. at this, at this crossroads well the world may never know <laughs> lost to the ether now unless one can remember somehow <laughs> a few minutes no but uh but the other thing man we're, we're getting we're getting caught up in the units thing well that's well that i wanted to go down the unit rabbit hole <laughs> with this podcast so even if we only got the units i'm fine with that yeah the uh no because the other thing the other thing was uh, about the expansion of the universe but we might not even get to that nah but you know we could if you want to now because it's kind of related to like um the cosmological constant that's one of those really interesting quantities too. Oh, man. Yeah. We were talking about you know if constants are varying or not, mm-hmm. and the co- the cosmological constants. Another one of these ones where we don't even know. You know, this is one of these ones where we're like way off potentially <laughs> with it. You know, we don't even know. It's kind of one of these weird things that's kind of forced in there. Yeah, and um, you know, at least originally that's how Einstein. Uh, yeah, originally Einstein about. put it in there to make it so that the universe isn't expanding. Yeah, and then he realized. That that was a blunder because he just forced it in there. Yeah. So he called it his biggest blunder. But then later on, people were like, "Oh, you actually need the cosmological constant because the universe is expanding." Yeah. But it needed some correction to it because mm-hmm. I think it was expanding faster mm-hmm. than what people expected. And um, yeah, it's this weird constant just thrown in there. We don't even know if it's we don't even know if that one's constant over time. Mm-hmm. Um, could be evolving. Could be dynamic. Could be a function of something that we don't know, like dark. The, maybe the, the dark, uh, dark energy, energy or, yeah, yeah, dark energy. Yeah, but the cosmological constant is one of these weird ones too. It's it's one of these fundamental maybe constants of nature. Um, I think it's unitful though. It is okay. Yeah, but um, it's it's part of the Einstein field equations, which is um, part of general relativity. Um, and yeah, and and, and one of these things. Um, well, that's another example. That one that one's not a no- that's a more of a notch in the camp where it's. The units aren't sacred because he just kind of came out of it. He just kind of came up with it out of nowhere. Yeah. Kind of like, ah, yeah. oh, shit. Yeah, this this yeah. works this way. Right. He needed yeah. to fit it in that yeah. equation to make <laughs> it work properly. Yeah. Right, right. But that one's an interesting one as as well. I didn't research much with on it. By the way, the same thing with Schrodinger's equation, right? How so? They stuck in that uh, H-bar. Because where there's H-bar and H-bar. No, because. He, H-bar and H. Yeah, but he didn't really stick that one in as much because the thing is. The Schrodinger's equation, you know, you need the momentum of a um, of a particle mm-hmm. for that, and I think they use the momentum of a f- photon. No. Well, I'm just relating it just to h and h bar. Like Planck's constant is one of these constant values. It's another fundamental con. That one truly is a fundamental constant, right? Um, because it appears all over quantum mechanics. First of all, well, and- h. H came about from Planck, who assumed that the frequencies of particles are quantized. Yeah, the black body radiation stuff. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I think yeah, I think you could consider that a fundamental quantity, but that's also unitful. Like we mentioned earlier, it's the the unit of action joule mm-hmm. seconds. Um, but that one came about from um, a quantum prediction, basically saying mm-hmm. that you know Planck said basically. You know, particles, we found out that the particles have wave properties. Mm-hmm. You know, wave and particles, you know, there's some duality there. Mm-hmm. He then made the assertion that, okay, only 
uh, particles can take on these certain frequencies. Mm-hmm. They have to be a fun. They have to be a, a, um, a multiple of H. H or H bar, I can't remember. I think initially it was H, and then yeah, we, I think it's initially H. Yeah, and then the two pi came out somehow, and then which you know, is interesting. Be two H-bar. pi, why? Yeah, I know. I don't know. It's one of those things where I was like, two pi. How does that come out? This is also one of these things I was thinking about on Pi Day, uh-huh. and I was trying to. I came up with the question of: Are all are all um, quantities that have pi in them somehow related to? A spherical, a circular, or some kind of periodic phenomenon. Mm-hmm. And all of the ones that I could think of were somehow related to that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you could come up with a counterexample, but they're somehow related to spheres or, you know, if you can, if you want to like condense all this, um, you know, because we have like three spheres and two spheres and one spheres and things. Mm-hmm. That's just the dimensionality of the circle. Mm-hmm. So you call like they're all related to n spheres, mm-hmm. um, n spherical quantities. Yeah. Um, and I think that might be a true assertion. That's... I can't. If you can think of a counterexample, though, or if anybody in the comments, if you can think of a counterexample to when pi does not or when pi shows up and it's unrelated to an n sphere, yeah. then of course, by all means, that's let us an know. Interesting, that's an interesting notion because I've thought about that in my undergrad too. I think um, it's purely geometry. Yeah. But it's a, but that means that geometry is fundamental to a lot of our physical uh, – the physical things that we, that we gather. But, yeah. but as, as we know, geometry isn't necessarily the same in certain reference frames, right? Well, not inertial at least. Um, but yeah, yeah, because you're saying when the space time gets warped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, geometry kind of can just change. Yeah, yeah. So in a sense, it's like it's not the most that also, fundamental thing, you know. Right, right. Yeah. Not in physics. No. Because physics, you know, the physical system, you know, it is what it is. The world is what it is. The math is beautiful and all that. But you know, if it doesn't <laughs> square away with reality, then yeah. you know, it's not our universe. It's some other yeah. nicer universe. But <laughs> nice. that kind of that kind of goes along with um, the whole shape of the universe thing. Mm-hmm. So there's some interesting criteria that you can actually figure out somewhat the shape of the universe. And it's not the shape of an hourglass, like a beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is <laughs> kidding <laughs> yeah but um they were saying that experiments show currently that the universe is most likely mostly flat mm-hmm. at least locally mm-hmm. so that means that you know everybody's seen the analogy that einstein does of you know space time yeah. he basically condenses space time from three dimensions into a flat sheet yeah so you know you see the typical flat sheet grid and then they put the planet on there and then it yeah. warps space time that's what i tell the ladies by the way too what's that My stomach is locally flat <laughs> <laughs> if you get close enough so what you say on tinder locally flat yeah. <laughs> it's euclidean okay it's not <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but yeah anyway but um yeah so we so the thing is you want to know the global shape of the universe though mm-hmm. that's another f- linguistic fail that yeah. i was thinking of because global Literally comes from the globe. <laughs> right, right. You, they mean to say universal on, on larger scales. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 The universal shape of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is where linguistics really sucks. You know, uh, when yeah. you start talking linguistically, this is where, this is where all kinds of um, failures of understanding come from. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so, some, so local means like in a region and then global or universal means like the entire shape of the universe. Right. So you can tell this. With an experiment, I guess you could say, by seeing, like, technically, if you have two, let's say, if you have two light rays or two photons traveling in a straight line, Mm -hmm. if the universe has a positive curvature, meaning, like, it's in the shape of a sphere, let's say, eventually, you can imagine that if you have two straight lines running in parallel on a sphere, eventually they're going to actually intersect. Yes. And that's because, you know, the sphere will eventually, if you can imagine, imagine it's going up, up, up. If you imagine, like, going to the North Pole on, like, a globe, eventually both of those straight lines are going to have to intersect at some point. So that would be a positive curve. Not parallel, if, if they're perpendicular, you're saying. Parallel. No. no. So, like, locally they look parallel. No, if they're parallel, they travel like this and never intersect. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So 
on the on so if you imagine how we're lo- how we are locally sure. if we have two parallel lines they're never going to intersect yeah but as you look in a global perspective as those parallel lines travel they will eventually intersect because the globe has a positive curvature mm. can you see it no so imagine so imagine I don't because they they never they will never meet because they will on the globe nah. that's where the shape comes in uh, <clears throat> I see. If you're, I see what you're saying. You're yeah. saying if I take a, it's sort of like a pizza slice in a way. Okay. Like a no, you're saying like a pie slice or something. Okay. Like you start them off like this, and then they follow the curvature, and then you're saying they converge at some point. They will converge at some point, even though they I, were parallel to begin with locally. That's assuming that they follow the curvature of gravity or something, right? No, it's just a curvature of the shape. I don't. I don't. I don't agree then. Um. Okay. Well, what are you not seeing? Okay, maybe we'll have a discussion off 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 air. Okay, yeah, but I mean, you but, should be able to see this though. If you imagine just two points on a on a globe. Mm-hmm. Now imagine those glo- the globe. You know when we zoom in mm-hmm. onto the globe, everything looks flat. Yeah. So you imagine you have two of those points. They start moving parallel to each other. Mm-hmm. Now imagine when you zoom out. What's gonna ha- what's what's it gonna look like when those two parallel lines going? What's going to happen to those two parallel lines as they converge to the North Pole of that globe or that sphere? You're saying they – okay, you're saying they're converging on the, the – the, okay, now your argument is they have to converge at the North Pole. Yes. That's not the, any difference in my argument though. No, because I, I thought what you were saying was that they follow their own straight path. They do. And that straight path – but they're but they perpendicular. I mean they're parallel. They're yeah. never going to cross. That's in a flat system. In a curved system, mm-hmm. a positive curvature system, they will converge. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay, so it's yeah, non yeah. it's non Euclidean. Yeah, yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, so yeah, gotcha. So so yeah, so now you see the, the picture there with a positive curvature, that's mm-hmm. what would happen if our if our space time, mm-hmm. let's say, had a positive curvature. Yes. It's just the same thing should happen. Yeah. Of course, we might be in too local of a region to be, to mm-hmm. be able to test that because you know the the universe is thirteen point billion light years or maybe right. even more. Right. In size, so right. it's like, how do you test that? Light hasn't you know? even reached there yet, right? So, like, yeah. your local region could be completely misleading, and everything's right. gonna look flat, right? Even on the globe, if you know we're on our flat earth here, <laughs> you know, if we're on the globe, everything looks flat, you know, it'd take a long time to see any kind of converging of two points. Mm-hmm. Um, if you just sent like a ball or something, it's not, it's not gonna happen. So, the other option you can have besides flat and positive curvature. Curvature is negative curvature. Mm -hmm. So if you have a saddle point, a saddle shape, let's say, now what's going to happen is your particles, when they're sent off, are actually going to diverge. So they're going to diverge infinitely away. So they're going to kind of curve away from each other. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things to test, or the three ways to see the the shape of the universe. Mm -hmm. Of course, that does not mean that the universe has to be a sphere, a flat plane, or a saddle. The universe could be a dodecahedron or something for all we know. Mm-hmm. It's just that those are the trivial cases to tell you if the if the universe has some kind of positive, negative, or zero curvature. So that's mm-hmm. a start to see at least what the curvature is. Yeah. Currently, with experiments that we have right now, the universe is pretty much close to as flat as we can see. Mm-hmm. So no curvature, zero mm-hmm. curvature. Um, and that's you know that's that's up in the air, but that's what we're where we're at right now. I like to think the universe is uh, is riding on the back of a tur- giant turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the Earth was riding on the back of a giant turtle. Oh, yeah, maybe that one. <laughs> or no, I guess it's turtles all the way down, as they say, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the prevailing yeah. theory that I'm going to stick with. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's uh, our time looking like? I can't yeah, see. We're, Can we're, you about, see? we're about an hour in. Oh, um, we are? Yeah, so... Oh. Um, all right, we should end it then. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, What's a good question? A good question. A good question for you folks is, uh, you know, I would say, hmm, what's something that sort of stumps you? Or maybe if you can... Well, let's do it related to the uh Yeah, no, that's there. what I'm saying. Like a, like a physical thing that stumps you, maybe the units kind of don't make sense to you. Because, like, we've we've already gone through at least, you know... Seven years of schooling in yeah. physics, yeah, at least seven. 
Uh, <laughs> maybe even more for some of us. Yeah. Oh, physics? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> about seven. About seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say so no, about eight, I think. Yeah, we're pretty equal Technically on eight. that. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty equal on that. But, um, but yeah, the... Uh, you know what? So we've kind of internalized a lot of these concepts, but maybe to some of you, I know we have some undergrad listeners. What What are some of the things that kind of have you scratching your head? Some of the concepts. Mm. I think torque might be a, a really common one, but yeah, I'm kind yeah. of intrigued what what the notion is out there. I know that for undergrads, you kind of don't necessarily deal with uh, a lot of the higher concepts like action or whatever. Yeah. Most professors don't even care to talk about it. Oh, but they do it in classical mechanics yeah, for Lagrangian you, a little when bit. When you get to Lagrangian, yeah. you kind of talk about it. But um, So they'll do it, just not yeah, at a low, low they level. Won't, they won't talk about the higher grand. No, no, no. The grand ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, what do, what do you think? Um, do units make sense to you? Do you think units are sacred? Do you think units are fundamentally important? Or are you of the school of thought where it's like, no, what really matters are dimensionless quantities like mm. the fine structure constant or, you know, or maybe you like working in CGS, <laughs> centimeters, gauss, seconds, mm -hmm. you know. There's, There's different big. systems, by the way. I want to yeah. clarify. We, we don't, we're just comfortable in the système international. <laughs> uh, Beautiful one. Yeah. So French. <laughs> <laughs> Baguette. The, fr uh, the French listeners are going to roast your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. my ass. <laughs> I'm let do for much. Um, <laughs> All yeah. right. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. That about wraps it up. All right, folks. Thank you. Okay, Stick guys. For the outro. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you that made it this far, uh, we just want to say like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with your friends, with your family. You know, there's a lot of... You're in quarantine more than likely right now because of the <laughs> corona pandemic that we're currently dealing with. <laughs> I might have it. Who knows? Terrence might have it, you know. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm definitely dealing with an upper respiratory uh, something. We'll see. We'll see how this all pans out. Terrence might have a new co-host. We'll yeah. Um, but, yeah, the uh, yeah, go ahead and answer in the comment section or a question that we proposed and uh, make sure to share. Can you reiterate the question again? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, do you think units are sacred? Do you think... Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's something deeper there, or do you think it's just kind of a, like we were saying, f counting in a sense? Excellent. So, um, okay, guys, uh, once again, just check out eigenbros.com. Mm -hmm. That's the website. Make sure you check out um, eigenbros on Twitter, eigenbros on Instagram, and then we have eigenbros2 on TikTok. We'll see you guys next episode. Yep. Peace.